Donna Bush with your CIG TV News Brief on this Thursday. At Wednesday's media briefing held by the Ministry of Health and Wellness, a number of important announcements were made, including the current and ongoing surveillance work on non-communicable diseases in the Cayman Islands. Epidemiologist Rachel Corbett explains. Understanding the epidemiology of non-communicable diseases, for example, diabetes, hypertension or obesity, is a high priority and we're looking to do this in a number of ways. Recently, the census report was released and there was a question in it which focused on, particularly on disability and had a question about medically diagnosed illnesses in the population. Um, and what it reported was that the highest occurrence illnesses were diabetes, arthritis and cataracts in the population. The census is a really helpful recent source of information about the population. Um, and it's particularly helpful for public health data because it provides de a denominator of the size of the population, but also the population according to different age groups or different demographics. And we can use that when we have other health data to understand the rate and the prevalence in the population and to be able to compare this to other population sizes. You can watch the entire press briefing on the Cayman Islands government's YouTube channel and on CIG television on your local cable channel. Making other headlines, staff of the Family Resource Centre is gearing up to start their various programs for parents and children on island. One of those programs is called SNAP. Parent facilitator Amber Calm explains more. SNAP um, stands for Stop Now and Plan, and it is an evidence-based clinical program that we are going to be running starting September 12th. Mm -hmm. It caters to um, children from the ages of 6 to 11, as well as their parents, and it helps them to um, become aware of their emotions, um, practice self-control, and make keep their problems small in the moment. So you can contact us on our phone number 949-0006 or email us at frc at gov.ky and we'll be happy to um, you know, speak to you and get you registered for any program that you feel could benefit your family. Andre Bailey is also a program facilitator. He tells us more about two other programs parents can register their families for. This one is for parents um, who are transitioning from being in a, a marriage or in a relationship, moving in, into co-parenting relationships. So they're transitioning from a single household probably to two households. And what does that look like? So we take parents through that transitory period so as to mitigate any negative effect on the family themselves mm -hmm. and the children that are often a part of that equation. Um, what are the tips and the strategies, practical strategies that parents can use to improve the behaviors of their children? We understand that children are sometimes not regulated mm -hmm. and parents need assistance in building that regulation. We understand that children have lagging skills mm -hmm. and because of those lagging skills, parents themselves need to be aware, need to be educated on what is happening for the ages and stages of their children. And by doing that, by increasing their capacity, we know it filters over into positive parenting. Remember, you can also tune into the Bobo Show, 8 p.m. on 89.1 every Tuesday in the month of September to learn more about the, the Rethink Parenting program with the Family Resource Center. Well, the Cayman National Cultural Foundation, or CNCF, received a significant donation by a family with close ties to the Cayman Islands recently. The donated artworks are two mixed media images by Miss Gladwin K. Lassie Bush and a watercolor painting by U.S. artist and longtime visitor to the Cayman Islands, Mrs. Betty Wood. This is my beloved son, hear he him, and a little child shall lead them by Miss Lassie and the Cayman Cottage by the U.S. artists are now part of the National Collection, held in trust by both CNCF and the National Gallery of the Cayman Islands. Minister for Youth, Sports, Culture and Heritage, the Honorable Bernie Bush, attended a recent reception for the artwork. And he says the generous donation by the Wood family now makes five Miss Lassie paintings that have come home in the last year. To see great art return to the place uh, it was created is very gratifying. Now, the National Collection houses the most Miss Lassie paintings in the world, while Mrs. Wood lives in New Orleans and still paints at the age of 81. Well, the forecast for tonight calls for partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of late night showers and possible thunder. 
Temperatures will fall to the upper 70s. Uh, seas will be slight to moderate with wave heights of two to four feet. While the two-day outlook is, is for similar weather conditions through to Saturday afternoon. Turning to the synopsis, a tropical wave over the Western Caribbean is interacting with an upper level divergence pattern over the Western Caribbean that's supporting showers and thunder across the three Cayman Islands. Well, a reminder that you can get the latest on local weather conditions online at weather.gov.ky. And that ends today's news brief here on CIG Television. I'm Donna Bush, as always, thanking you for joining us. I wish you a safe and wonderful night, and I invite you back here again tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.